Good morning and a very warm welcome to you from wherever you're joining us. Some from Redbourne and the surrounding area, others from further afield. It's a great pleasure and joy to have you with us as we worship together on this, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. We begin our service as we sing together the hymn, Lord of Beauty, Thine the Splendour. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together in this time of worship to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah is read for us by Riona. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wounds incurable? refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading this morning is read for us by one of our gospelers, our church youth group, uh, read by Aidan. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will it will or what will they gain in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels to the glory of his Father, then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. There was a game show some years back now called The Generation Game. Some of you may remember it. It was a game show that had two couples every week who were competing against each other for prizes. Each couple was related to each other across generations, hence the name Generation Game. It might be a mother and son, it might be an uncle and a niece. These couples had to compete by performing games and each game had an expert giving a demonstration. It might be a demonstration with a potter's wheel making some pottery, or it might be doing some Morris dancing in a group. At the end of the demonstration, the couples had to copy what they had seen. As you can imagine, for the audience, that was the fun, because we were watching these contestants making a real pig's ear of whatever it was they were trying to do. I do remember one particular game in the Generation Game, and it was how to put a cover on a duvet. Now this was back in the day when we were used to using sheets and blankets and eider downs. Remember those? And duvets were a novelty. You only really saw duvets if you went to the continent. So this was early days and this was a demonstration of how to put a duvet cover over a duvet. Well, we watched the expert turn the duvet cover inside out. He then put his hands inside the duvet cover, right to the very ends, took hold of the corners and also the corner of the duvet, and then shook the duvet cover over and down over the duvet. Now, I don't know how you put on duvet covers. I don't know if you use that method. God wants us to look at things inside out. It's the only way to see things the right way round. In our Gospel reading, Peter has just recognised, in the bit before, Peter has just recognised and declared that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the one that they were expecting, the one they've been waiting for, the one who was going to restore Israel. So having recognised Jesus as this person, 
the natural things to plan the next move, to work out a strategy. Because if Jesus is the king, how are they going to get rid of corrupt kings and rulers so that Jesus can take his rightful place? Suffering and death can't be part of this plan. Surely, that's just utter madness. Jesus is asking his disciples to think in an inside out way. I have a friend who some years ago went off to a retreat and conference center. She was very excited about going. She, she said she was responding to God's call. She felt really sure that God was calling her to this place. She was excited and full of enthusiasm. So she set off and she had planned to stay there for three, maybe four years. So I was rather surprised when I heard that she was back home after about nine months. So I phoned her and I arranged to meet her for a coffee and we met up. And, well, I was really surprised to see how dejected and down she looked. So we had a bit of a chat and she said to me, she said, I, I can't believe I got it so wrong. I was so sure that God wanted me to go there. But right from the start, nothing seemed to work out right. Everything was going wrong. And there was just one problem after another. So we talked a little more and we talked about her time there and what some of the problems had been. And then she said, of course, there was this one person. She said, this one person who came to the retreat center. And this person had some problems. And I had quite a few really good conversations with them. I said to my friend, you didn't make a mistake. You did hear God. He did want you there. It was important that you were there for that other person. You were the right person to be talking to this person who'd come to the retreat center. It was important for you to be there at that time, not so much for yourself, but for the other person. Sometimes we are so wrapped up in how things affect us that we fail to see what God is doing around us or through us, what he's doing with other people, for other people. I love going to the woods and when our children were very small, I can remember one occasion when we went walking through some woods and uh, my husband and our son, who must have been about seven, they went walking on ahead. And I was behind a little bit, walking with our daughter, who was two, about two. And then I realised that Rebecca had stopped. So I turned round and I, I, there she was. She, she had bent down and she was looking at something really intently on the ground absolutely absorbed and entranced by something. So I turned around, I get, got down on the ground so that I could see what it was that, that was thrilling her so much. And then I saw that it was a little tiny ladybird. And she was watching this ladybird making its way slowly across the ground. She was smaller, nearer to the ground. She had noticed this. Me, well, I'm taller. I'm looking up at the sky. I'm looking at the trees around me. She had seen something that I so easily had missed. You are setting your mind, says Jesus to the disciples, not on divine things, 
but on human things. God wants us to look at things inside out. It's the only way to see things the right way around. And Jesus said something else in this passage that's a, a bit inside out. He said, those who lose their life will find it. Those who lose their life will find it. Now, many of us may well be feeling that we are losing our lives now, that we've lost over these last months part of ourselves, of who we are. We can't take part in social activities or pursue satisfying hobbies. We can't fulfil roles, even in the church, that give us a sense of who we are. And if we've not actually lost them, well, then they're diminished or limited or via a computer screen. And the nature of our work, the nature of jobs has changed, if we're lucky to have one. Friends and relatives may have died and taken a bit of us with them. Jeremiah complains to God why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? How can we find ourselves again? How can we find purpose and direction? Come back to me, says God to Jeremiah. Follow me, says Jesus. Paul and I have just celebrated our 42nd wedding anniversary. We feel very blessed indeed to have made it to 42 years. We know that for some people, marriage has not worked out. For others, they've been together far less years than they had hoped. But we are blessed that we have just celebrated 42 years. And it made me think back to our silver wedding, 25 years of marriage, when we renewed our vows. It was like having another wedding, really, because we, we had a service in church. We had invited lots of friends and relatives along to witness the service. And then we'd hired a boat down the Thames. And uh, we had a live band and we had music and dancing. I love dancing and a party. It was just a wonderful day. The weather was great, so if you went up on top of the boat you had a, a fantastic view as we went down the Thames. It was that particular time when you could see Mars up in the sky. Mars was visible. And David Blaine, some of you may remember him, David Blaine was, uh, he was in some kind of cabinet uh, from a, hanging from a, a crane, hanging over the, the River Thames. I can't remember why he was doing that. And then as we sailed down the Thames, the Tower Bridge opened for us. Well, it, it didn't actually open for us. There was a big boat coming the other way, but it was as if it opened for us. All very exciting. But for me, the important bit of that day was renewing our vows. When I said the original vows on our wedding day, I meant every word of them. But let's face it, I was naive. I didn't really know what I was saying. But 25 years on, with the ups and downs of those years, then I really knew what those vows meant. And I wanted to re-say them with a deeper commitment. Jesus called his disciples at the start of his ministry. Come, he said, and follow me. And they did. They followed full of excitement and anticipation. Peter, Andrew, James and John, and Matthew, the tax collector. 
And now here we are, three years on. And they too have experienced highs and lows. And now, here is Jesus calling them again, but into a deeper commitment. Take up your cross and follow me. Those who lose their life will find it. God wants us to look at things inside out. It's the only way to see things the right way around. At the end of the generation game, the winner, the couple that has won all the, the games, uh, has to choose one of that couple, and that one person sits in front of a conveyor, be a, a conveyor belt. And along that conveyor belt go all the prizes that this person could win. So as they go along, he or she watches, tries to remember what they are. Because when the time is up, that person has to try and remember. And for each prize that they remember, they get to take it home. Now, every single week, whatever happens, whatever else is on that conveyor belt, that person could forget everything, their mind could go blank, but they could depend and trust on one thing that would be there every single week, a cuddly toy. Whatever happens in our lives, there is one thing we can always trust, depend on. God said to Jeremiah, I am with you. Jesus says those same words to his disciples and he says them to each one of us today. I am with you. So, let us take up our cross, find our life again, and follow Jesus with a renewed and deepened commitment. Together we affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning, our virtual choir sing the anthem, God So Loved the World, music by John Goss.
Our prayers of intercession this morning are offered by David Walker. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ Jesus, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Turn back, O mortal, quit thy foolish ways. Old now is earth, and none may count her days. Yet thou, its child, whose head is crowned with flame, still will not hear thine inner God proclaim, Turn back, O mortal, quit thy foolish ways. God, our destination and our companion, Turn our feet to where we can help to bring your kingdom into our communities. Help our eyes to see where your will may be done. Strengthen our hands to reach towards those whom the world ignores. Inflame our hearts to burn with the eagerness of Jesus as he turned his face to Jerusalem. We pray for all who are called to respond to the challenges of the coronavirus pandemic. For the leaders of nations, for scientists, for medical professionals, for employers and employees, for teachers and students, for parents and children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Earth might be fair, and people glad and wise. Age after age, their tragic empires rise. Built while they dream, and in their dreaming weep. Would they but wake from out their haunted sleep? Earth shall be fine and people glad and wise. God, our vision and our spur, wake us up to the reality of our fragile ecosystems. Give vigour to those who campaign for renewable energy, for carbon neutral industry, for cycleways, and for a greening of our world. Turn the hearts of those who see only the material and never the spiritual. Give an enhanced conscience to those who pollute for profits. Inspire the companies and nations whose wealth is invested in fossil fuels that there is a cleaner but still profitable way forward. We pray for all suffering from the devastation of Beirut and the restrictions in Hong Kong. We pray for the desperate migrants and the racially abused. And we pray for all who seek to bring reconciliation where there is oppression and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Earth shall be fair, and all its people one. Not till that hour shall God's whole will be done. Now, even now, once more from earth to sky, peals forth in joy the old undaunted cry, Earth shall be fair and all its people one. God of comfort and constancy, turn us from complacency and renew our faith in your eternal governance. Turn our beautiful individuality from selfish paths to join the communal highway of individuals from diverse countries, cultures, and faiths. 
Look with our compassion on those who suffer, on those whose steps have faltered, on those whose hearts are broken. We pray for all who are unwell and for those who care for them. We pray for all poised between life and death and who dream of Jesus' promise of eternity in your presence. We pray for the comfort of tears and the love of neighbours to those who mourn. And we look to that time when we will once more dwell with those we love and miss. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together now in the words that our Saviour Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe and blameless in spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing together our hymn, Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our, our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.